Hi guys, welcome to the Ardor server. Over the last couple of years running the Ardor server, I've helped thousands of you guys with your storage server builds. And the most frequent question I get after someone receives their IT Mode HPA controller from my eBay store is, help, my hard drives aren't showing up. In fact, many of my videos were made to share the experiences I've gained while helping many of you troubleshoot your storage setups. However, those videos are scattered across my channel, so I thought I should put together one video that can help guide you to the various other videos on my channel. That's the motivation for this video where I'm going to share with you the top 13 reasons why your hard drives aren't showing up in your LSI HBA controller. Now, before we get started, do me a favor and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm so that more people can benefit from this video. And if you're new to this channel and you're interested in building storage servers, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss my videos. All right, now unlike most top list videos, since I want this to be most helpful when you're having problems, I'm actually going to start from the top of the list instead of the bottom of the list. So reason number one, loose SAS connections. I know what you're thinking, come on now, how can anyone not know how to plug in a cable? Well, you know what? About 70 to 80% of the time, this turns out to be the reason why someone's drives aren't showing up in their controller. And believe it or not, even with a couple decades of IT experience under my belt, it's happened to me too. This also seems to be most frequent with the SFF8087 connectors like these or the SFF8644 connectors like these. So let's do a quick review of these connectors and show you how to securely connect these type of uh, connections. All right, so this here is a Dell uh, H310. It is a SAS 2008 based HBA and it's got the uh, female side of the SFF8087 type of connector. And I'm gonna grab one of these cables here that has the male side, all right? So the way you wanna do this is plug this cable into that connector until it clicks, like that. If you don't hear that click, it's not all the way in. And furthermore, you wanna test that this is actually fully engaged into that connector by yanking at it a little bit, and it should not come loose easily, all right? It should only come loose easily if you actually press down on the latching spring right there and then pull. And sometimes even when you press down on that, it shouldn't come out that easily. Um, okay, so let's do this again. Let's do the other side. You wanna press it all the way in until it clicks like that, yank on it lightly and make sure that it doesn't just come loose by itself. And for, for you to properly disengage this cable, you wanna press down on the spring latch mechanism and then pull it back out. All right, so that's how you make the SFF8087 connection. Make sure that you hear that click and tug on it a little bit gently. You don't have to pull too hard and just make sure that it doesn't come out easily. Now, if you also have a backplane on the other side of that cable, such as this backplane from an R710, you also wanna double check that connection on the backplane as well, just like this hear the click, tug on it gently, it doesn't come off, then it's securely connected. And the only way it should come off is when you depress that spring clip and then you can pull it back out. All right, now the other type of connector that also has this type of problem is the SFF8644 connector that I have right here. All right, so this is a square mini HD um, SAS connection and it fits onto cards like this one here, which is the LSI SAS 9206 16E. There are other cards that also have this connector, but th this is basically a primarily a external um, SAS connector. And because it's a square connector, I think sometimes people uh, plug this in upside down because it's square and you know, it's not really supposed to fit, but it does kind of fit sometimes if you uh, force it a little bit. So they might do something like this and say, hey, I'm done. Well, no, nope, you're not. Okay, um, it will kind of, because it's not really supposed to go in this way. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that, you see, if you look at this cable here, let me get a, show you guys a close up of the cable. 
All right. So you'll notice this pull tab here pulls back this latching mechanism right here. All right, see how it goes up when I, let's see if I can maybe do it from the side here. All right, if I pull on it, this moves up. Well, that's what latches this connector onto the HBA side. And so similarly, when you look at the HBA, you wanna see the side, you see this other side doesn't have holes. This side has two holes on top of each connector. And that's what that latch on the cable will engage into. So you wanna plug this in all the way until, here we go, let's see. Let me frame that right. Until you hear that click. And if you tug gently on it, it should not come out easily until you actually pull the release and then it comes out. All right, so that's how you properly secure a SFF8644 connector. All right, so again, guys, this is like 70 to 80% of the time, the reason why your hard drives aren't showing up. And, you know, I think sometimes when I tell you guys this, when you're asking me for help um, on eBay or wherever you're reaching out to me, I think sometimes people don't believe me and they're like, oh yeah, of course I got the cable plugged in. Um, trust me, just double check it. It's happened to me and I've been doing this stuff for a very long time. You know, just double check it because uh, it's, you know, it's free. It doesn't cost you to re replace a cable. It doesn't cost you, um, you know, any parts. You basically just reseat the cable and see if it fixes your problem. So it's a very cheap economic and uh, like I said, 70 to 80% of the time, this is the reason why. All right, so that's reason number one. Reason number two, power disable. Some modern SAS hard drives and SATA spec version 3.3 drives have a new feature called power disable that allows a backplane to perform a hard power reset on a drive using the 3.3 volt power lines. If you're having problems with your drives not showing up, put your fingers on your drives and see if you can feel them spinning. Usually you can feel a slight vibration from the spinning motor. If your drives feel like they aren't spinning, check out my video on this power disable issue and how to work around it. I'll leave a card in the corner of this video for you as well as a link down in the video description below. But basically, it, uh, the workaround entails covering up the 3.3 volt power pins uh, in order to block that signal from powering down your drives. All right, so go check out that video if you feel like this is what uh, is causing your drives not to show up in your controller. All right, reason number three, SM bus conflict. Some of the OE branded cards like the Dell H310 I have here, have an SM bus signal. This signal works on Dell Enterprise servers, but for other brands of motherboards that implement their own SM bus signal, this can cause a conflict. Usually the symptoms are one, your computer won't post at all, or two, it will post, but some of the DIMM modules are disabled and you see reduced amount of RAM in your system, or three, sometimes the system will post, but the HBA card will be disabled entirely. I see this type of issue happen most often with Gigabyte motherboards and HP computers, but that's not exclusive to those two brands, just the most common ones I've seen when helping out my customers. So if you think you have this problem, watch my video on how to work around the SM bus conflict. I'll leave a card up in the corner to that video, as well as a link down in the video description for you to check out. All right, reason number four incorrect mounting of hard drives in Dell sleds. This one only applies if you're using a Dell server. If you take a close look at the Dell drive sleds, like this one here, there are two sets of mounting holes. One is labeled SAS, right there, all right? And the other is labeled SATA U. And if you're using SATA drives and you're new to this type of stuff, you might be thinking you should mount your SATA drives using the SATA U holes but this would be incorrect. Unless you're using what's called an interposer board, always, always use the SAS mounting holes, no matter if you're using SAS or SATA drives. I made a video on this topic a while ago, so if you want more details about that, I'll leave a card to that video in the corner here, as well as a link down in the video description. Reason number five 
non-standard sector sizes on your SAS drives. If you are using SAS drives that came out of an enterprise storage system like EMC or NetApp, they may be formatted with a non-standard sector size like 520 bytes, 524 bytes, sometimes 528 bytes. Most standard OSs like Linux and Windows will not recognize drives using these non-standard sector sizes. In this case, you need to low-level format the SAS drive to a standard 512 bytes or 4K sector size. I have a video that will show you how to do that, so click on the card in the corner or check out the link down in the video description if you think this is what your problem is. Reason number six, defective SAS cables. If you have brand new cables from a reputable brand, the chances of having a defective SAS cable is extremely rare. I personally prefer SAS cables that are made by Molex, Amphenol, or 3M. The majority of SAS cables that come from the major server manufacturers like Dell, HP, Lenovo, Supermicro are usually made by the brands I just mentioned. But if you have used cables or less reputable brand cables, there's a chance you might have a defective cable. Also, these cables can wear out. In my lab, where I've tested the SAS connections of over 30,000 HBA cards, the component I replace most often are the SAS cables. The act of plugging and unplugging these cables just wears them out. And eventually I start noticing flaky connections on some SAS lanes. This can happen even with the uh, brand name cables I mentioned earlier after several thousand uses. Now, typically if a SAS cable starts to fail, you will notice no connectivity or a flaky connection on that particular SAS lane but not all four SAS connections at the same time. It's extremely rare for all SAS lanes to fail together. So if you're noticing all SAS lanes connected through that same cable are not working, I would not immediately suspect a bad cable. In fact, in that case, I would go back to reason number one that I mentioned earlier in this video. However, if you're noticing one, perhaps two SAS lanes that are not working on this cable, then I would start investigating further. You can do this by swapping the connections on the drive end with a known working part. For example, if you have breakout cables, swap the SATA connection to another drive that is currently working. Or if you have a backplane, swap the drive with a drive in a working drive bay. Then see if the problem follows the drive or does it remain on the same SAS cable line or drive bay. This should help you narrow down the problem and confirm whether you have a defective cable or not. All right, reason number seven, inactive PCI slots. Sometimes a PCI slot can be inactive for various reasons. If you install your HBA card in such a slot, it may power on, but will not be detected in the system. This can happen on server motherboards like the one you see here. This is a dual socket motherboard and the PCI lanes are connected to each of the CPU sockets. So if you only have one CPU in this dual socket motherboard, the PCI lanes that are connected to the, uh, the empty socket are going to be inactive. So you can put a card in there, it's not gonna show up anywhere. All right, so now this even happens on single CPU motherboards, especially, especially if you're using consumer PC boards sometimes the PCI lanes are shared. For example, if you use one of the onboard M.2 slots, this might disable one of the PCI slots. I also recently helped a customer figure out that when he had a GPU in his by 16 slot, the, the PCI slot where he installed the HBA would become disabled because the PCI lanes there were shared between those two slots. If your HBA card powers on and you see a heartbeat, but just don't, it just, doesn't show up as a PCI device, you might be having this problem. So I recommend that you read the motherboard manual carefully to figure out how to configure your PCI slots correctly and make sure that your HBA is in an active slot. All right, reason number eight, reverse breakout cables. I've mentioned this in my SAS cable video, but SAS breakout cables come in two varieties, a forward breakout cable and a reverse breakout cable, and they are physically indistinguishable. This here is a breakout cable, 
and it looks like a forward breakout cable, but it's actually a reverse breakout cable. So they look identical, but their wiring internally is different. So if you're connecting drives to your SAS controller, you need to have the forward breakout cable. So be sure you do not have reverse breakout cables. For more information on this, watch my SAS cable video by clicking on the card in the corner here or the link down in the video description. All right, reason number nine, the Linux 5.8 LSI driver bug. Okay, so some time ago, a driver update to the Linux kernel 5.8 series introduced a bug that would cause the LSI driver to fail on LSI cards that had very high Q depths like this 9201-16E card. So if you wanna see if you have this problem, you'll need to look in your server logs for error messages from the MPT3 driver. I'll leave a link to the kernel bug report down in the video description below so you can find more details on this issue and how to identify it. At the time of this recording, I believe the problem has been fixed on newer kernel versions, but if you're experiencing this problem, there is a workaround by manually setting the Q depth of the controller to something like 10,000. Reason number 10, SAS breakout cables need power. This might sound silly to some people, but keep in mind a lot of people who don't deal with enterprise SAS drives are just not very familiar with how SAS drives work. When you're connecting a SAS drive directly via cable, the SFF8482 connector, like this one right here, okay, provides power and data. So consequently, you need to connect power, a power source to this cable, which in this case are these uh, SATA uh, power connectors. In some cases, it could be a four pin Molex as well. So if you're connecting SAS drives directly to your HBA and you're new to this type of stuff, you've connected the SAS drive, you've connected the HBA and your drives aren't showing up, make sure that you're connecting the power source to the cable. Reason number 11, using ancient SATA one drives. Although SAS controllers like the one here do provide compatibility with SATA drives, the compatibility is limited to three gigabit per second SATA two drives or newer. It does not extend to the older 1.5 gigabit per second SATA one drives. I had a customer who was building a rig to wipe some old hard drives and he, he was having difficulty and it took some time until we eventually figured out he was using a whole bunch of old SATA one drives. So if you want to wipe or access SATA one drives, unfortunately, this is just not going to work. Reason number 12, no status LED on the server backplane with SATA drives. I get this one a lot from people who are using SATA drives on servers with backplanes. In a lot of implementations, the LSI IT mode firmware will not be able to activate the status LED on the backplane like those on Dell servers and super micro servers and perhaps even other brands, but those are the two that come to mind. In the case of Dell servers, the status LED functionality requires a SAS controller with Dell firmware. So if you're using a controller with LSI firmware, they simply are just not going to work. However, the activity LED should still work. On super micro servers, the backplane LEDs behave differently depending on the type of backplane you have with those SATA drives. Now, if you have SAS drives, there is a way to control how the LEDs behave. And I made a video about that a little while ago. So I'll link that in the corner here, as well as down in the video description. But anyway, if you think that your drives aren't showing up because you don't see the status LED, well, check again, check your SAS topology as I show in the LSI HBA troubleshooting video. Your drives may be showing up just fine, but the LEDs just aren't working correctly. All right, reason number 13, damaged SAS lanes on the controller. All right, guys, so we are at the end here. If you have an LSI HBA controller that has a heartbeat, shows up during post, is detected as a PCI device in your OS, and you've checked that your cables are good, your backplane's good, your drives work fine, and yet perhaps one or two 
of your drives just don't show up in the controller, it might be because you have damaged SAS lanes on the controller. Here is an example of a damaged controller. If you look closely on the backside where the uh, SAS ports are located, you'll find pairs of uh, capacitors for each SAS lane right here. So let's see if I can bring this up closer to the camera so you guys can see this. All right, so like right there, right there, right there, right there. These are all SAS lane capacitors. And you'll notice right here where I have the, uh, the label here, there's two capacitors that are missing. You want to make sure that these are not damaged or perhaps missing. If they are, that probably explains why your drives are not showing up. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know as part of my testing process, I actually connect cables to every SAS port and test every SAS lane on the controllers that I sell in my store. I've made some videos in the past showing how I do this testing. So if you buy from my store, 99.99% .99 of the time, you will not encounter this problem. However, there have been occasions where a card gets damaged in shipping and those cases are out of my control. All right, guys, those are the 13 reasons why your drives might not be showing up in your LSI controller. I hope this helps you guys troubleshoot your problems. And if you've experienced a problem that I haven't mentioned here, please share it down in the comments below. Be sure to smash that like button and if you're new to this channel and you like this sort of thing, hit the subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss my next video. If you'd like to support my channel, check out my eBay store. I have the greatest selection of pre-flashed IT mode HPAs as well as other unique server parts. Link in the video description below. All right, guys, that's it. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.